as we arrived in Narandra, we set up camp on some beautiful, plush green grass. To our surprise, just down the hill was the most amazing water park. Yes, we all had a go, even myself. In the following days, we had a huge surprise to come, with our friend dropping in in his cute little plane. We've uh, been travelling through central New South Wales for a little bit of time now. We have a bit of a treat today. We have parked up at Miranda Airport and we are meeting someone here who is just touching down about now. And then the flare, touch down. We'll wait and see who it is. Barbecue. Town Beach barbecue. Town Beach, yeah. yeah. Just no waves. No waves. How, how far from the coast? I don't know. What did it take you to get? Two hours at two hours, but 130 knots. Andy and Cornet have shared their love of flying over the past few years. What started with little remote control planes has now morphed into larger planes. Boys and their expensive fun toys. This time, not only did Andy get to go up and fly, but the kids too. Riley was very quiet, but I know he definitely enjoyed this. Tilly, on the other hand, was excited. You can see from the huge smile. Sierra Zulu Charlie taxiing for runway 32 Narendra. Narendra traffic, RB9 Sierra Zulu Charlie entering runway 32 for departure. Narendra.
my baby boy going out. What did you just do, Riley? Going Cornet's aeroplane. How was it? Fun. Fun? Just fun? Which part you did you do anything? What was yeah, what was the best bit? I don't know. The whole thing? <laughs> travels, we see a lot of emus, often in pairs. This mob of emus, however, were just beautiful to watch. Did you know that the kangaroo and the emu have been chosen on the Australian coat of arms because neither animal can walk backwards? This is symbolic of a nation moving forwards. Victorian border. That's the Murray River. Um, and technically we were on the Victorian side, uh, although we didn't mean to, but it was the only place that we could find a place to camp tonight. Um, it is a public holiday in Victoria today. This is a great little camp spot. Quite nice actually, except for it turns into Bougainville on a public holiday. In fact, behind the caravan, through these trees, probably about three or four hundred meters, there is hundreds of people I would say uh, all camped down there all got their own little boats and tinnies and jet skis and uh, it was uh, pretty noisy yesterday afternoon um, but anyway yeah so great spot <clears throat> just not for public holidays I'd say in fact Matilda was just lying in bed a minute ago and spotted something in the tree so follow this tree up there is a little koala sitting in the tree. The benefit of our trip is things aren't always planned. This time we took a detour to the Burrager pub. My dad lived here with his family when he was five. His sister, Myani Jan, went to the Lowsdale school nearby. Dad tells us stories of being a young boy climbing up piles of hay and watching the farmers do their work. What a different existence from today. Then rowing in, the site of Ned Kelly's last stand before being burnt to the ground and obviously led left to grow grass. That's it. All right, this little spot in Glen Rowan is um, Ned Kelly's last stand. If I can, here it is. Oop right here so apparently um, he managed to get onto his horse to somewhere around here but um, was shot apparently here and was eventually captured although they arrested him to the ground it's funny how different people recalled it differently one sergeant reckoned he did it on his own and others said they did it as a group 
But anyway, quite interesting. So this is a little park in the middle of town where he um, obviously succumbed to his in injuries. And straight through this uh, this blacksmith, and then behind it here is the Glen Rowan Inn, uh, which was the one torched to the ground. And uh, I think it's these two brothers died in that. So yeah, we'll have a uh, oh yeah, and we have an old lock police lockup and the police station. So these were from Greta, and that is where Kelly was first locked up as a 16-year-old boy. Pretty much started the whole saga. Uh, interesting turn of events. <laughs> back to oldies though, heaviest thing in the creek. So, if there is any left, it's going to be at the bottom. What you want to do is, scrape the bottom. I'll let you in on the Scrape the bottom, you get gold every time. Like the gold sinks to the bottom, white stuff comes to the top, so... Just scrape it off. It seems ridiculous because you don't want to scrape your gold out. Trust, it's so heavy, it's on the bottom. And anything you find, and take home. After my slice, of course. <laughs> so you keep doing that until you've got a small handful. Swirl the pan. Wash the top layer away. And all the gold. No nuggets in this pan, but they're in there, don't you worry, just gonna scrape the bottom, that's the trick. We were at Ballarat and all I wanted to do for my birthday was find some gold, so we headed down to Sovereign Hill some f for some fun. We found lots of gold in the creek. But well, I am actually going to pour out molten gold, liquid gold. So I pour that out and then stop. And what stays in here is the impurity. Now, 1200 degrees, that's very, very hot. It's gonna take a long time to cool down. I've talked to you a lot. I can talk to you more, but I'm gonna get this to cool down quicker. <laughs> Should work. Most parents know that works. There's a gold bar. Now, it doesn't look like a gold bar yet. It's cooled down. I'm going to do a little bit of science very quickly. It cools down because gold is an excellent conductor of heat. Gold is excellent at conducting heat. It will push its heat out of itself very, very quickly, um, very efficiently. Now, the gold smelter, he didn't need to do this because he knew that was hot. And I figure you probably know this. But I've been doing this at demonstration a long time and it struck me the other week that something very fascinating happens. So I make fire, and the thing that I find really fascinating about this is there's a gold bar on the table, and most of you are looking at the fire. <laughs> Which is fascinating, isn't it? Because it's $240,000 there, we're all looking at the fire. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that strange? Right, but there's a gold bar, it's very hot. I'm going to cool it down. Is it safe to pick up yet? It cools down quickly. You're, you're good, you're, you're very cautious. Normally people go, yeah, pick it up. I don't care, it's your hand. It's totally safe to pick up. As soon as it stopped making a noise, it was safe to pick up. So that is a real gold bar. That is approximately three kilograms of gold. And that three kilograms of gold is worth approximately $240,000. Okay to you. Right. Well done. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hello, Till. Thank you.
fingers and ears, folks. Make sure the kids are covered. Hard to take wins from the left. Squad. Freeze it. Squad. Ah. Oh. So watch out. Stop the air with your guns up. We got a bit of a water problem ahead. The boys are working on it. Thank you, James Oliver. <laughs> you let us know when the way's clear. There's a cat. You lot in front walk right up to handrail so boys behind can see nugget. Move along now. Move along now. Right up to handrail. Thank you. 